And I would like to thank my first mate supporters, Andre Cruz. As a member of Diecast International Builders, I approve this video. This is Don the Diecast Pirate, and today I have for you another episode of What's in the Case? And I forget what episode this is, so let me bring up YouTube and go to my channel and go to videos and see what. So, this is episode number nine. What's in the case? Episode number nine. Seems like we haven't been going that long, but it seems like we ought to be farther than we are through my cases, but yeah. I think next week, uh, I'm going to pull out another one of those 24 car cases, but we'll probably just go through like 12 of them, and then we'll jump back into the wall cases, um, just to change things up. I kind of want to spread those out throughout the whole run of these videos, so we don't get through them all, and then there's no more of them to look in. Uh, so to start with, I got one of these Roger Dodger art cars, right? And I, uh, I got one of the, I got it. And I thought, well, I would use it for parts to restore an old one, and then I realized that the engine and the exhaust pipes are different. I've never drove one of these apart, but looking at how the newer cars are, I'm sure that the engine and the exhaust is part of the interior on these and that's why the design changed where the old ones the exhaust was I think the exhaust came out the top it did yeah the old ones it did um, it didn't come out the bottom so the and the engine was a separate piece and it was metal um, so I got that and I thought well maybe I would customize it sometime Got that that like strange colored glass. It's like a brown, dark dark orange is what it is. It looks like. And then just for fun, I picked up another one. Right. So I don't know. It's got that one side says steam and the other side says punk and. I don't think it fits on the car, right? I mean, we could probably use those wheels for something else in another build, but I don't know, right? And then if you remember that German police car Porsche, at the same time that I bought that, I bought one of these Mercedes, or it's a BMW is what it is. And then I think more recently, I picked up another one. I don't know why. Maybe I had these both at the same time. I think there was these two and the Porsche maybe. I don't remember. But it's been so long. I was reminded of some Siku cars that I had when I was a kid. I went to Germany in 1986. Because uh, my sister her husband was in the Air Force over there stationed at Rammstein and they were living in base housing in Lonstuhl and my stepfather paid for my mother and I to go over there and like I took like 50 bucks with me at the time and the only thing I wanted to do was buy a chess set well, I, I bought that chess set but then we were at a store in I want to say it was Kaiserslautern, Kaiserslautern, I don't even remember how to say the name of that town, um, 
and they had these die-cast cars and they had some German police cars. I'm like, that would be cool to have German police cars. And I didn't, I didn't know what brand, I mean, the, when I was a kid, you know, I looked at them and, and I saw that they were Siku. Um, I just thought that was pretty neat. And I had bought three of them, or four. Two of them were Mercedes, and I don't remember what model they were, and two of them were like VW wagons, Volkswagen wagons, and the doors on the Mercedes opened and the back hatch on the wagons opened and they had the antennas on top. And a few, just a few months ago, I remembered, I was like, because back in 2019 when I started getting back into this, I remember those cars and I was like, I can't remember who made them and I couldn't find them online. I finally found them. Finally figured out that they were Siku, and I found them, and I looked at the price and said, you know what, for something that I got towards the tail end of me playing with cars, I don't want to spend that kind of money on them, so I didn't get them. Old vintage red lines that I never had when I was a kid. Yeah, I'll pay money for those! Sikus. I don't know. Anyway, so on to the next thing. So I had this old 70 pickup truck here. I bought this and I thought I would customize it. This is around the same time that I got one of these art cars. And I picked it up and then uh, it's just been sitting in the case for if and when I ever decide to do something with it. Right, and to go along with that, I have another one, and I gotta tell you, I mean, I love how they're trying to do the fake patina, but it, I don't like it. It looks like somebody just took a, a paintbrush and, and and flung the paint on. It doesn't look right to me. It's a nice effect for what it is. I mean, you know, a kid wants to have an old beat up pickup truck to drive around when he's playing. That's great. Um, if I ever master the weathering technique, um, I might consider doing that on an old truck like this. But I think this one, if I do something with it, it's going to go a different direction. So there's that. And then last week we were talking about those... Uh, Mustang stalkers, right? So here's another one that I drilled but didn't tap. We'll probably do something with sometime. This is a black wall. That's a black wall. So this would have been right after the end of the red line era. And then this one already tapped it put screws, well I didn't tap it because I didn't have a tap then, but put screws in it. And this is one, you can tell it was originally yellow and I had the decals for it. And this was originally, when I was first starting this, I planned on doing the Bullet Mustang as my first custom, and I was going to build this car as my first restoration. So, I think sometime we will. Um, those wheels do have I don't know if it's maybe a little bit of play wear but they would probably clean up just fine and look pretty decent on that car without having to replace them right okay so let's get that out of the way I like and this was my inspiration for doing the Bullet Mustang because I looked at this car and said somebody was trying to make the Bullet Mustang out of this and I wanted to do one my way. So that's why I did the Bullet Mustang. That's what that said to me. Somebody was trying to turn this into the Bullet Mustang. Okay. So then we're going to finish off with some Sweet 16s. We have, and I don't know what color this is, is this uh, antifreeze blue? Not antifreeze blue, what would this be called? Ice blue. 
custom Barracuda. This is a Hong Kong car. The hood's intact. A pillar's bent slightly on this side. The window's cracked front and back. Um, I think this one's going to make a great restoration sometime. Right? Okay. So then we have another one, and this is a, a, a U.S. car, and the cowl is broken out of it, but I had the two pieces so I can put it back in, and this hood, I just had to open, and I don't think the pin's broke. No, the pin's not broke, but on the driver's side, it looks like the hood got bent. I can see how the paint is cracked. Um, we'll have to try to fix that whenever we do restore that one. Okay. So there's that U.S. Custom Barracuda. And then I have another purple U.S. Custom Barracuda that has three wheels. This one, the hood's intact, the cowl is intact, and everything. That's going to make a super awesome restoration someday. Right? And then... One of these cars that's like my Achilles heel of... Sweet 16's is where they have the body color and the interior color that coincide, whether it's blue and blue, red and red. In this case, it's the purple and lavender. And this one, let it come back around here. It has that crooked Holman Moody sticker on the side. <laughs> But the paint is so bad. I do want to restore this one, but it's not, I mean, and it's deep dish on the front, right? Factory deep dish wheels on the front of that. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the Diecast International Builders and what it is. So, the members, if you haven't seen already, are my good friends Matchbox Mark, Ron, and Somo Diecast, Opa, Opa's Diecast Workshop, Cole, the Kudis Diecast Resurrection. Okay, those four guys and they invited another guy and me to join and we both agreed so it's pb peter pb's retro restorations okay so it's the six of us and so we each pick two builds a year in the, in the themes um next month is surf wagons on the June 15th and Peter picked those and then in so that's June and then July on the 15th of July is VW Bugs clown cars and I picked that one so we would really love for you guys to come build with us and uh, share what you can do and put your spin on our ideas Right? We want to see what you can do with, you know, we want to see what you can do. That's basically it, you know. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, leave a comment down below. Click that like button for me, please. I would really appreciate it. Ring the bell for notifications. Don't forget, I have a Patreon, okay? Patreon means that you get to see what I'm doing before everybody else does. 
not videos, but pictures. Pictures of things that are coming up on the channel, um, things I'm working on, uh, post pictures of things in progress, um, sometimes several days before the videos are out. So you can get an inside look at what's going on here. Okay. Um, so, yeah. And then follow me on Instagram. And you can get to see all the beauty shots of all the builds that I've completed. And I have pictures of all my cars on there from the beginning. Okay. So, uh, that's it. As always, this is Don the Diecast Pirate, and I will see you next time.